When Halo 4 was initially announced in 2011, there was a ton of pressure and high stakes pending on this game. Just one year prior, Bungie had released their final Halo game in Halo Reach, which was a phenomenal game. But even before that, the mainline Master Chief story had a pretty satisfying ending in Halo 3. But with Bungie's contract completed, Microsoft set out to recruit former members of Bungie and completely new talent to create 343 Industries who would debut their first ever Halo game in Halo 4. And this would end up becoming one of the most polarizing Halo games in the entire franchise. Not only was the mainline Halo series back, but this would be the first time any main Halo game was created by a different studio. And even more so would mark the beginning of the next storyline following the Master Chief. And upon Halo 4's release, the community was more split than ever. Hi guys and welcome to Rocket Sloth, today we're taking a look back at Halo 4 and its legacy while also taking a look at how Halo 4 holds up today in 2019. Let's get into it. Picking a place to start on this one is pretty difficult because from the very beginning, Halo fans were already skeptical as to how a different studio would do with a Halo game. I mean, Bungie had always been the forefront of the Halo community and did an amazing job at building and forging a community and a relationship with the gamers playing Halo. During the Bungie days of Halo, Bungie had a very close and transparent relationship with players and Bungie had the reputation of really crafting their games and putting so much heart into the creativity that went into the games while also putting so many things below the surface of the games that players could discover or keep coming back to that made the Halo universe feel alive. Halo Reach really served as a farewell or goodbye letter to players from Bungie. So no matter how great of talent or whatever direction Microsoft would take Halo 4 in, there definitely would be a lot of scrutiny from the community because up until that point, Halo and Bungie were one thing. And during the early stages of development in Halo 4, it was clear to an extent that Microsoft and 343 Industries knew at least how important the story and universe was to the people playing their game. And they also were facing a really huge challenge in having to develop something that felt bigger and grander than games like Halo 3 and Halo Reach, while also setting up the stage for what was going to come in the future and set Master Chief up on a quest that could be stretched out in a new narrative. But that wasn't the only problem that 343 Industries and Microsoft were facing at this time. Comparatively, Halo Reach, the last Halo game released, while it did good in sales, didn't even compare to the level of sales that Halo 3 had over the years. In 2010, Halo Reach failed to beat out Call of Duty Black Ops, which was also released in the holiday season of that year. So it was very important to Microsoft and 343 Industries that whatever they produced as the next Halo game would have to be Master Chief centric and also be evolved enough to appeal to a new audience to try to beat Call of Duty Black Ops 2, which was set to release the same holiday season as Halo 4. Which leads to one of the leading theories as to why there were some really drastic changes made to this Halo game that felt very out of place compared to previous Halo entries. But we'll get to that in just a second. In November of 2012, Halo 4 released, but upon getting into Halo 4, things were a little bit different. Sure, there probably wasn't any main or simple way to top what Halo 3 had done, and it made the most sense to probably scale the story down a little bit to give it room to grow over the course of what was supposed to be another trilogy. Instead of focusing on introducing multiple moving parts and narratives and continuing on some of the core story features that were so prevalent in the Halo trilogy, Halo 4 opted into taking a more intrusive look at the Master Chief and John and who he was as a character at his core. Halo 4 takes a really good look at the ongoing relationship between John and Cortana who mostly was absent in Halo 3, and it actually was a really unique change of pace from what we had seen in other Halo games. The only person that ever truly was by John's side through all of the events of Halo and really foiled his character is dying, and they both know it. And we actually see how John deals with these emotions and grief and denial that he goes through, which is 
a huge jump from anything we had seen in other Halo games. In Halo 1 through 3, the entire human race is at stake and he does his mission. But the moment that the one person left that he actually cares about is deteriorating before his very eyes, he crumbles. It's a really unique perspective provided here of John that we never got to see in any of the Halo games and it fits and makes sense for his character as he's part human and part war machine. But then all of a sudden all of this useless shit starts happening in the campaign that takes the one really interesting feature of Halo 4 and stomps all over it to try to make new characters? To make a narrative that's somewhat connected to the multiplayer? Oh and of course the Master Chief has to have a new threat because the stakes of losing Cortana isn't enough of a motivation so they just threw in Voldemort from Harry Potter and said, here, here's a bad guy, you can fight. Yeah, it really feels like the Halo 4 campaign initially was really on to something unique that could have just been amazing had they stuck to that. But for whatever reason, they decided to really try to just blow everything out of perspective and write a new narrative path or set up for a new series and at the same time they took a major disregard for the legacy that Halo had built so far. At the end of Halo 3 the elites and the brutes were at a civil war with each other. So where does Halo 4 pick up? The elites are bad again, brutes are nowhere to be seen, GG no re, if you wanted to know how that story ended you should read a book or wait for Halo 5 to kind of vaguely explain something. Of course, because of the storyline and the conclusion of Halo 3, the Flood aren't in Halo 4, so instead, Prometheans were introduced, which were supposed to be the replacement to the Flood, so you'd fight the Covenant and the Prometheans sometime. And honestly, the Prometheans really weren't that exciting to fight. They're a little bit challenging at times because they have the little guys that catch your grenades, but outside of that there was nothing really exciting or unique about fighting a Promethean. I guess having maybe that close quarter fight scene was kind of cool, but honestly these enemies felt more annoying than anything else. So the Didact's basically some forerunner warrior who's a big bad guy who wants to kill everyone, and instead of Master Chief getting the help to Cortana to stop her rampancy, they have to chase after the Didact all around, uh, just in time for Cortana to sacrifice herself and kill Voldemort. Meanwhile, while all of this is happening, you're introduced to a bunch of little characters that aren't really important, like Sergeant Palmer. We see a really cool cutscene with Catherine Halsey, but other than that, she's not really in the game except for Spartan Ops mode, which is neat, but we'll get to that later. And more or less, other than a couple of small minor twists and turns here, that's the extent of what they did with the story. Like I said before, there's some really great moments between the Master Chief and Cortana that redeem a lot of the campaign, but the rest of the stuff going on just isn't important. The campaign level design actually was pretty good here, and there were some really interesting set pieces where the Master Chief goes, even though he's mostly on Requiem or some sort of spaceship. There's a few moments in the game where the skybox is just absolutely gorgeous, and I took a moment to stop and just appreciate it. It felt a lot like landing on the Halo ring in the beginning of Halo 1. But along with these new set pieces, 343 Industries decided to take it upon themselves to overhaul the graphical appearance of this entire Halo game. And it was pretty weird. I don't know, maybe they were trying to edge the game up to make it look more exciting for people to maybe buy the game, but I remember before this game launched, 343 Industries kept bragging on and on about their new lighting system that was going to completely revolutionize the way Halo looked, and honestly it just made Halo look a lot worse I think. Along with that, a lot of the architecture and textures that they designed for this game really just feel shiny and reflective, which makes the game feel more repetitive than the more colorful palette used in Halo 1 through 3, or even the grittier tone in Halo Reach. It's pretty obvious early on that this game is built on an enhanced version of the Halo Reach engine, but just look at the side by side of Halo 4 versus Halo 3. There's just something very off about the way that everything looks in Halo. 
Halo 4. One of the big complaints really comes to even Master Chief's appearance. Master Chief went to sleep and is woken up and all of a sudden his armor looks completely different than it did when he went to sleep. It's apparently the same armor, just a different artistic take, and I'm not really a fan of that, how this game has just a different artistic take than the rest of the Halo games. I wish they would have maybe stayed a little closer to the core of Halo. If they decided to change up his armor and at least mention it or have him put on new armor when he reunites with humans, which happens pretty early on in this game. I probably wouldn't be complaining as much, but I just don't like how drastically different the Master Chief looks without any real context. I just don't see why they couldn't pull a Halo 2, or even say Cortana upgraded his armor. She says she upgraded his HUD. Why didn't she upgrade his armor? It just would have made a little more sense. It's nitpicking at this point, I know, but it just, the art direction definitely is off and it's really hard to pinpoint what happened here. And the thing is, graphically, a lot of advancements had been made in gaming as a whole and some of the cutscenes and pre-rendered cutscenes look absolutely amazing. The intro sequence from Halo 4 literally made my jaw drop when I watched it. Some of the characters really look like they're a real person, but that's only during the pre-rendered cutscenes and some of the cutscenes aren't pre-rendered it's kind of weird it's like they did some Sonic the Hedgehog thing where they render some of the cutscenes and then they do in-game cutscenes for the rest but yeah character designs look better compared to Halo Reach or Halo 3 but at the same time at what cost because the art direction just became so bizarre in this game it's really something different because it's good in some places and just the weirdest things in the other we could probably shift gears to the multiplayer at this point but there isn't a lot to say about this multiplayer other than it just really wasn't that great okay on its own it's fun you can sit down and you can play hours and hours and hours of this game and have a good time but as a halo fan as many people were who bought halo 4 and came into halo 4 with experiences from previous halo games halo 4 doesn't even shine a light to some of the previous halo games halo has always been built upon an arena style fps game and Halo 4 really tried to change it and make the game a little bit more tactical and it's pretty clear that they were definitely taking a lot of inspiration from the Call of Duty series which was the main game that they were trying to beat during this holiday season and they introduced gun loadouts to Halo which was something that had never been done before in this extent where you have like a full-on create a class. Sure, different game playlists came out later that went back to more of the classic Halo style but since this was just such an important feature and the main core way people played multiplayer in the beginning, it definitely left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths early on. While Halo Reach had some of the best looking armor in any Halo game, and the customization in that game was so much fun and actually gave players a reason to sit on Halo and grind out credits to unlock the armor that they like, Halo 4 kind of took it a different approach and went overkill with it. They introduced a ton of new helmets and visor colors and all of these features that as a person who liked customization probably would have liked, but it fell more in line with this new art style that Halo was doing that just looked weird. I mean, look at some of these helmets. They don't feel like Halo at all. And also the default visor color was blue for this game, which yeah, there's blue visors in the Halo universe, like ODSTs and stuff, but not being able to have access to like a default color or something that looked a little more in line with Spartans that we were used to kind of makes you hate your character from the beginning. You can't do anything cool with your base set character. I don't know. Some people don't care about the character creation, but to me, that was actually one of the biggest factors as to why I kept playing multiplayer because I always wanted to reach that next armor or that next visor color. This game had this really weird prestige system that you had to do to unlock helmets and honestly I just lost interest after a while. There is actually a decent chunk of maps in this game which are pretty nice. The lighting is still a little bit awkward. Honestly at the end of the day the multiplayer was fun for a while to play but it didn't hold up at all compared to Halo Reach or Halo 3. And while 343 Industries did do a good job at updating playlists and trying to keep interest on the game as long as they could, there definitely was a major lack of content in Halo 4 upon its release. I mean, instead of doing Firefight like they had in Halo Reach and Halo 3 ODST, they replaced it with something called Spartan Ops, which was kind of like Firefight on regular multiplayer levels instead of exclusive Firefight levels. And they had some sort of story mode, but for the most part, it had you just running from one end of the map to the other, kill some guys, and then run back to the other side of the map 
kill some more guys, and then run back to the third part of the map and kill some more guys. The story was kind of cool because it at least incorporated Halsey back into the narrative, and it really kind of introduced the Spartan 4s a little bit more, and kind of made you care about them a little bit. It was actually a little bit neat. There's this super big bad guy, elite guy, named Jewel Mandama that you have to hunt down and kill. And Spartan Ops ends in a huge cliffhanger that was going to be resolved in Spartan Ops Season 2 that never came out. So instead, they just concluded it all in the first level of Halo 5. Like, this character they built up so much, just, uh, done. Halo 5, just boom, first level. But honestly, the repetitiveness of just reusing multiplayer levels and fighting some bad guys on a regular multiplayer level was pretty bad that it wasn't even worth playing through Spartan Ops unless you just really wanted to see the story. But I just watched it on YouTube because the story was so much easier to watch than to actually sit through grinding all that out because it wasn't fun at all. Which once again, makes it super clear that in Halo 4, one of the biggest travesties was that the sandbox of this game was weak. And we haven't even gotten into Halo 4 Forge or Halo 4 Custom Games, which were some of the biggest deals in Halo, and also probably contributed to why multiplayer failed. They didn't even have the resources themselves to make something interesting because of what they did wrong with Halo Forge and Halo Custom Games. But this video's gone on long enough, and we're gonna do a whole video dedicated to just looking into Halo 4's Custom Games and Forge, and take a look at what went wrong, because it's really crystal clear that they messed up in developing the sandbox that was supposed to go into this game. Today, Halo 4 is not very active on the Xbox 360. There's still a small amount of people playing on the 360. Your best bet if you want to play Halo 4 is to get on the Master Chief Collection and hope you can find someone willing to play Halo 4. I know a lot of people actually chose to uninstall Halo 4 when the Master Chief Collection gave you the ability to choose which Halo games to play on, but if you are a Halo fan or you're an aspiring Halo fan and you've played through some of the Halo games and you've liked them so far, Halo 4's campaign is still worth the playthrough. It's definitely a really interesting look at the Master Chief that you won't get anywhere else and I actually recommend that you take the time to sit down and play this campaign still even with its flaws. The campaign itself is still fun enough to play especially if you're playing with someone else and you're not gonna feel cheated out of your time playing the game. But as a whole we're giving Halo 4 a C plus. We're gonna be covering Halo 4's Forge and custom games in its own video coming out on this channel so be sure to subscribe with notifications on so you can see that. But did you know Bungie actually Actually considered making their own Halo 4 game before they went ahead and developed Halo Reach. They actually thought about it. We made a whole video on that that you can check out now in the meantime and just be sure to check in for our Halo 4 Forge and Custom Games video. If it's already out, it's on your screen now. If it's not, then watch the other Halo video. Alright guys, that's it for today and we'll see you all later.